Welcome back to Safas Unscripted. Brett, once again, with these stupid little mime <laughs> movements over there. We are talking Six Nations, boys. Remember, people, I'm thinking at the start just to get it out of the way because we always forget to say this. If you like the channel, please remember to like and subscribe. We appreciate each and every one of you guys. Six Nations, round three. And there's two games that we might feel, uh, okay, runaway victories uh, and one big derby. But we have to talk about the about the Island Wales game first. Boys, what are we thinking? Do does Wales stay in the game for the first half and then just get blown out of the water? Um, so before you before I answer that, you don't have to like the channel to subscribe. Just subscribe, please. It doesn't cost you anything. It's Lego. <laughs> just it's Lego. It's a point. Um sorry, what was the question? <laughs> does Wales have some hope? In this game to stay in the game after 20 minutes okay Brevin, you can go first okay well um look i think we're going to see a lot more from wales than we expect I, obviously I, I don't think they're going to win the game but i think we'll see a fight from wales i think we've seen a fight from wales against scotland obviously they had a terrible first half against scotland second half they came back and literally lost by one point then they came up against England, if I'm correct, yes. And they also got close to beating England, unfortunately didn't get the job done. Obviously, Ireland is a whole different ball game, a lot better than England, a lot better than and Scotland. And it's at the Aviva, not at the Principality, by the way. Yeah, so look, I think first half Wales will find themselves within reach, and then second half I think Ireland will be too good for them. And I just think... The back line will be too much. Obviously, the forwards from from Wales are usually a, a little bit more physical in the Northern Hemisphere sides. So, yeah, I think first half they'll stay in reach and then second half I really can see Ireland pulling away. By in reach, you mean 20, 22 points behind, right? <laughs> no, about 10. About 10. Let's just say that. So, I think, I think if... if... If I look at the Six Nations, it's become the most predictable tournament that there is in the world. Um, to talk about this game is actually, if you think about it, it's, it's super irrelevant. So I'm I'm that guy that's hoping for an upset. It's not going to happen because this tournament is so predictable. Ireland's going to win. It's at the Viva. It's just it's 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 a formality for Ireland. So. I'm hoping for an upset. I'm hoping for the ball to bounce in a different direction and some by some miracle Wales to win this. Um, I doubt they will, but I just wanted to just just a plot twist in this tournament. Just make it a little bit of excitement. I mean, come on. Yeah. Hope, hoping for one of those rainy, rainy days where Wales can just launch bombs into the air. Like kind of, kind of have a have a Wales versus South Africa semi final of the Rugby World Cup in what was it, 2019. 19, Literally yeah. the worst game of rugby you will see in your life. Just people booting the ball and then just somehow win it on penalties. Tommy uh, Rafael just making himself a menace at the breakdown. That's the only way that I see them doing anything. Because because let's be honest, I don't know how much you guys have seen of him, but Tommy Rafael has been insane. Like if you if you had to pick one of the players of the tournament, not even team team of the tournament this far, just one of the players, standout players, he has been sensational. I agree, I agree. Yeah, He's the only one for me from Wales that gets into that um, British and Irish Lions team so far. Literally, I was about to say the same thing. Like he's probably stuck his hand up. Probably gets in that British and Irish Lions squad. And look, Wales. They, they just that team that obviously they're going through a massive transition at the moment, losing Alan Wynne Jones, uh, half penny. Like they they've lost a lot of like of their of their culture because the, those players have been there for so long. But look, obviously Wales, we, we always enjoy a game against Wales as Saffers. It can especially when we go to the Principality, we know what they can do when they are at their strongest. I mean, they've been Grand Slam champions just a couple years ago, so. Yeah, let's hope Wales can actually, you know, find some form going into this game because, like, obviously, like Brett said, it's a bit predictable and we, we want to see these upsets. But obviously, two sides left in the tournament with Grand Slam hopes, and that's England and Ireland. So, it's crazy to think yeah. about that. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, the thing is, like, do you guys remember we made a combined 15 
where we had to put in one player of every single nation and we completely just looked past Tommy Rafael. Like we were we putting in a, a injured Jack Morgan above him. And to be honest, like I didn't even think of him when when we made the list. And yet, like we have to put respect on his name. He shut us up uh, when it comes to that outstanding performances this far. But let's move on to probably the biggest one of, of this weekend. And to be fair, this is an exciting game. I'm looking forward to this one. The Calcutta Cup between Scotland and England. Scotland holding the, the trophy, what is now, three years in a row? Three uh, in a row. For, yeah, yeah, going for four in a row. And, and it's at Murrayfield. Yeah. Initial thoughts, Brett. You can go. Yeah, I oh, I hate to say this because I love Scotland. But for some reason, this English side is just gritting out wins. It's I don't know what's changed from last year to this year. But Felix Jones. I think that I think that English side is actually going to pip the, the 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 Scottish this weekend. Um, hoping I'm wrong. Um, hoping I'm I'm very wrong because obviously I want Scotland to win. But yeah, I think I think I think if 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 England just keep doing what they've been doing, it's going to be a long day for Scotland. And and and. Um, uh, the fly of, of Scotland, oh, what's his name? Finn Russell. Wow, how did I hit a blank? Um, and Messi. Finn Russell, and, and and Messi is is Messi. He's um, overrated. So, yeah, my thoughts. Oh, well, look, I think when we talk about like the biggest games in rugby, like if you have tiers like S tier, um, A tier, that type of thing, I think there's two games that go in S tier. And that, honestly, for me, is the All Blacks versus the, the Springboks and Scotland versus England. Like, those are two massive rivalries, like, massive. Goes back in like, history. And, look, obviously, I would love Scotland to win this game. And But something, uh, I mean, we're agreeing a lot today, Brett, but <laughs> something's telling me that England are just that annoying side. I mean, we saw it against the Springboks in that semi-final. They are annoying to play against, especially when they are playing the rugby or the brand of rugby they are playing at the moment. And look, if, if England can do that and play that brand of rugby that's just stopped Scotland from gaining momentum, obviously, I think England have the, 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 the stronger pack in the sense. I think they're a tiny bit more physical than the Scottish pack. If they can really just get in the faces of Scotland and, and, and stop their ball from getting to Finn Russell, uh, put pressure on Finn Russell, because when we see pressure on Finn, we see sometimes he does tend to crack under pressure. So, honestly, England have it. They have, they have a massive potential to win this game, and I think they will. I think England will win this game by about seven or, or, or maybe just a little bit less. But that's just purely because I feel like the Scotland squad... They have such a talented squad, but it feels like they get nowhere every single time. And I feel like that's starting to play on the minds of these players as well. And it's a shame because obviously that if I had to pick a second team, it would be the Scots. But I have to be realistic here and say the Scots just, I mean, we saw them nearly, well, nearly blow it against Wales, like I said before. And then obviously against France, put up a bit more of a fight, but came up short again. So... Yeah, I mean, I think England's got this. I really do. I'm, go I'm going. It's either going to be a runaway victory for Scotland or a nitty-gritty win for England. Because England has been struggling with their rush defence, right? Because they still need to adapt to this new Felix Jones system uh, in defence. And if they don't get it right to the likes of Finn Russell, who is a bit crazy with it, that craziness could pay off against a rush defense like that, putting the likes of a Tuipel or two or a Hugh Jones to one from a Marva or, or even Kyle Stein at the moment through gaps, that could be very, very damaging for, for that English defense. If they can somehow cut that out, I think it's a, it's a victory for England. Uh, still a close game. Uh, so I'm calling it close for England or a runaway victory for Scotland. Uh, but I think if England take a victory over Scotland at Murrayfield, that will give them massive confidence. I'm not saying they will win, but massive confidence into that Ireland game because Ireland kind of play that same uh, behind the behind the receiver 
passes that they throw, yeah. dummy runners or, or stuff, really just attacking the game line. And if they can get that rush defense right against Scotland, they could probably get it right at, at certain points against Ireland as well, which will give them some some form of, of confidence. Brett, do you have anything to add to that? Uh, no, that's very well said. Everything from start to finish, that was well said. I agree with you on the on the runaway win or the close win for England. Um, yes, you, you that was well said. Spot on. Good job. I appreciate Good. it. Good job. You are okay. no longer casual bias. You are just biased, right? <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll sw- if the box were in this tournament, we'd smash everyone. Okay, don't, don't get me wrong. Okay, at the Aviva, at the Principality, at Twickenham, everyone's getting 50. Okay, anyway, <laughs> moving on <laughs> to the final game. He's back, he's back. <laughs> France, France versus Italy. Um, I have been in the, in the first game, I was impressed by the Italian attack, but not at their defense. Because they just leaked points against England's attack, who had who had, doesn't have an attack, and in the second game, I was more impressed by their defense. Now, I, they did concede thirty six points, but there's a little caveat behind that. But then their attack was nowhere. Is this finally the game against France um, where they put it all together and pull out a, a solid performance? Because because Brett mentioned it in a couple of episodes ago, where they nearly got that upset victory over France. Um, do you think they, they get it done this weekend or they somehow put up a show to keep it close enough, a respectable performance? Uh, you actually took the words out of my mouth. I was going to say that a few episodes ago, I actually called us that this is the game that I'm looking forward to. Remember, it was the episode where we said, which games are we looking forward to of the whole Six Nations? And yeah. this is my game. This is the game that I'm looking forward to the most. I... I want this Italian side to let the French know, listen, maybe um, that Oki that's in Vancouver now, he should have been in, 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 in Europe now. Um, not playing for the seventh side, but actually playing for, for your national side now because you needed all the help you could get against the Italian side. So I'm, oh, please let this be that game that Italy just, blows the world by storm and says, okay, we have to stay. My land is geploeg. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, um, if Italy ever wanted a win against the French, this weekend is the time to do it because they are missing their tail- t- talisman uh, and Anton Dupont. And as we've seen, France have not been impressive so far. They have been shocking. They have been underwhelming. I feel like probably, and and this is a bit controversial, but I think they've been the worst team of the tournament so far. In the sense worst that, living, yeah, yeah. In the sense that with the potential that everyone talks about, they just haven't lived up to it at all. I mean, at least we've seen Wales fight back. I mean, we we've seen these other teams, you know, show a bit of something. But obviously, the French they've got the results against Scotland, but like we all know, very controversial win. Uh, and obviously against Ireland, Ireland just blew them off the park, like absolutely slaughtered them. And look, I mean, the, the Italians have the potential to be something great. Like I said, they're probably lacking somewhere in that system. But look, this is the time to get the job done. The game is being played in France, correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. In Marseille. So... But like I said, it's still a massive, it's a massive opportunity to go there and, and, and win because they aren't at their best. And I can probably see the French even overlooking Italy in a sense because that's yeah. just their nature. So if, if, if the Italians are really up for this one, I think they can win. But I still think the French will just pip it. I, I do think the yeah. French have a bit too much. To go back to that that controversial win against uh, for France against Scotland, um, do any of you know? Because Scotland protested, they asked the World Rugby for clarity because they said that everybody could clearly see the ball grounded on the big screen. Everyone at home saw the ball grounded. Everyone saw the ball grounded. Why was it not awarded? I know it's two weeks ago and we shouldn't be talking about it, but the fact that. Scotland asked World Rugby, "Listen, what, what the heck? Um, does uh, did anything come from that? Did do you guys?" I, know I haven't that? seen. I haven't seen anything. Uh, no. the, the the big thing with it, Brett, is like, what do they expect to to get back from it? Just like a apology, because um, you're not going to get uh, anything overturned. 
So, like that's fair. I get that. Nothing will be overturned. But have the decency to say we messed up. But World Rugby will protect their image and say nothing because that's how they are. When in reality they messed up. Say we apologize as as a union or as World Rugby. We apologize for this. It was the incorrect call. But unfortunately, there's nothing we can do. At least then you've lived up to your mistake. But as of right now, they are still protecting referees. And I understand we need to protect referees in a sense. But when it comes to that type of thing, you've got to own up and you've got to say, listen, we messed up. Let's fix it. And and I'm not seeing any of that, which is an issue to me. Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's quite annoying, actually, if you think about it, because... Um, on the post I made on my other social media platform, um, half of the comments were people saying, I'm French, and that was a try. Like, I haven't, I didn't see any Frenchman say, oh, keep quiet, that wasn't a try, um, France weren't, yay, stuff like that. It's like, everybody's like, I'm French, and that was a try. We should so a bunch of Sc go. Scottish people that that went into your comments and, sa and said, "I'm French." That was a try. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you now, right? Even if I, if that was South Africa, if if France was South Africa, right? Even if I believe straight up 100%, that's a try. I'm not going into your comments and saying, "I'm South African and I believe that's a try." I'd go in there and say, "I'm Scottish and I believe it's not a try." Like, that is just how you do it. Like, no French guy would out himself like that. But yeah, I, I, I do like what, what Brevan said when he said that France probably is the worst looking team because all the other teams you could say, uh, Wales had their comeback. Uh, they looked good for a half. They looked good at certain points against England. Uh, even Italy looked good against England. Um, good offense against Ireland. Ireland blew everyone out of the water, obviously. Scotland had two good one half games two good first halves, where France, it kind of feels like they haven't been in the game even for 10 minutes in either game. It just feels like... And 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 the odd thing is, like, I backed them before before the um, Six Nations started, saying they have the big names. They have got quality players, right? Um, and just because they lose kind of their talisman, the, the face of rugby, wouldn't make them a bad team. Yeah. And... I don't want to say they're a bad team, but they look horrific. It looks like they've lost all sense of how to play the game, all sense of passion to play. It's like they just went, after the World Cup, just went like this, and Ireland said, listen, we're already fighting for, for some redemption. Back back up. It just feels like there's there's nothing when you when you look at the French game. Do you do you think it still boils down to, to that World Cup? Or, or what is going on? So I, well, from my perspective, how I see... Um, like if, if I'm looking at certain players on the field and stuff like that, I think that Aldrich is not a good captain. Um, he he's may a still... Sorry? But you do agree he's a great player, just not a good He's captain. a great player. He's like, a, he's like just some people aren't meant to be captain. Um, yep. Don't give somebody the big decisions to make on the field because he makes the wrong calls. He also... It's as if he's trying to do too much now. It's like, just play your game that you've been playing the your flipping last five years and get, get back to your best because leading is not one of your best attributes. So who would you give the reins to? Uh, to be honest, I wouldn't even know. Um, so it'll buy? Uh, sorry? But so it'll buy? I don't know. I honestly don't know. I... I just I can judge on what I've seen. I can't judge on what I haven't seen, if that makes yeah. sense. Yeah, well, fair enough. Look, like we'll see. if I even forgot what I wanted to say. I'm such a noob. Um, so <laughs> just carry carry on speaking. I'll get it in two six. Just yeah, you go. Yeah, I, why why would you suggest Cyril buy? I I just like the fact that like a prop. Or a hooker is is the captain, especially like when they when they just call a scrum, then you know they're up for the scrum. Because you always know these guys don't always like to scrum. But if a captain calls the scrum and he's a prop, he knows he has to lead by example. I just feel like they are the most casual guys on the field. They just know how to do it. Like you don't want to give it to the most busy body on the field. Um, yeah. Like you said with Aldri, let him focus on on just playing his best rugby. The other guys give him the captaincy and let him just. 
chill out on the field until he needs to scrum. Yeah, it's like okay. the like at the Stormers. You just twist this every time he wants <laughs> yeah. to scrum. <laughs> yeah, okay. exactly. Yeah, the noob, the noob remembered. Um, so, <laughs> look, I think with regards to France, I just get the sense that, and it's, and I do think it somewhat stems back to the World Cup. I think if you look at two teams, you look at Ireland, who, who we obviously are starting to have. I mean, it's a beef that's come out of nowhere between the two countries, type thing. And then you have a look at uh, at France, and uh, with another beef arising between the two. But it, it, as a Saf, if I look from the outside. I see Ireland who who have now said, you know what, we got knocked out in the quarterfinals. We have to go again. There's no other option. We can't sit here and, and, and just say, oh, woe is me. Whereas I think France have done exactly that. I think France will feel hard done by because of Colby's charge down and a few other calls that they say went against them. But I just think that they feel sorry for themselves and that mindset yeah. has to change. And as well, they, and, and, and I'm sure the whole world knows this, it doesn't take an expert to realize this, they build and they focus too much on Anton Dupont as their main man. That is their guy, and, and that's all, oh, Anton Dupont's not in the team, we screwed. Like, that's their attitude, and especially from the fans' perspective, I've noticed. So that's something that has to change. They have to build a culture where it's like, oh, Dupont's missing, so what? I mean, really. I mean, Johnny Sexton, who was, whether we like it or not, Ireland's main guy, he's gone now, and they're still keeping the performances up. So it, it, a mindset has to change. And, and with regards to captaincy, that's the issue I have. I don't see a guy in that team that could take the reins other than DuPont. And I think they need to develop some type of leadership somewhere in that squad um, obviously, they gave it to Aldrit because he's a senior player, obviously a great player. They thought maybe he could lead by example. But like we've seen with certain players, I mean, I, I think Eben Etzebeth is the perfect example. He's a fantastic, he's the, my, the best forward of all time. And, and I said that, that's what I believe. But when you put a captaincy on Eben Etzebeth's name, it's almost like he goes into a shell. And I think that's exactly what's happened with Aldrit. So who's, who's France, France playing at the end of the season when they tour to the south? I think they're playing the All Blacks. No, it's um, England playing the All Blacks, and we playing Ireland. Could they be playing Australia? You, but we play like four, three teams. We don't just play one. Talk about June, bro. Let's talk about June. Oh June, oh June. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. That I don't know. Yeah, I don't think they might just be playing like Japan. It. To be honest, I think it's Argentina. Yeah, well, if they didn't pick up their game, they're losing to Argentina. I'll, I'll, I'll make sure of that. I think it's Argentina. But why, why has this sudden, sudden um, reliance on one person become a thing? Because back in the day, they had Serge Benson that if he got injured, they moved on. If Freddie Michelak got injured um, or couldn't play for some reason, they moved on. They just put another guy in and they play their same style of rugby. Um, same with uh, Batch and Shabal. Shabal. Um, when he wasn't there, they didn't. It wasn't a concern for them. But now that Dupont's gone, oh, it's the end of the world. How are we going to cope? At least our sevens team will win everything now. What? Yeah. Why? You know, you know what's the what the odd thing is, right? So, so obviously Dupont, great player, right? Uh, probably the best nine in the world at the moment and stuff. But let's not act like. Maxine uh, Luku is is the worst player in the world. He's been absolutely brilliant for Bordeaux yeah. this season. Yeah. Jelly Bird is as creative as they come in in that ten jersey. He's been yeah. scintillating um, in the top fourteen in that ten jersey. You still have Damien Peno. It's not mistakes that he's like. Um, they it's not it's not system mistakes almost. It's it's rookie mistakes. Just knock ons. Everything. It's just Damien Peno couldn't catch a ball. Yeah. Like that guy, whether it was fumbled backwards or knocked forwards, they just can't do it. And I, I don't. It, it's seriously. I, I don't think I've ever seen that much of a drop off, because, like you can say, the box dropped off when we had that that era under uh, Alistair Kutsia, but it was a totally different team than what we used to have. This is the same French team without two players, and they look like the worst team in the world at the moment. I think France loses to England. 
Yeah, uh, quickly, uh, Brevin, the noob is going to forget what he wanted to say. Quickly, Brevin. <laughs> no, oh, you see, I've actually forgotten. Yes, see, <laughs> man. Oh. Oh, goodness gracious me. Right. Um, it doesn't matter. Let's call it. We've had a 30 minute it does episode. Matter. It was important, man. Look. But, but we're not going to sit here in silence while the man's thinking. No, no, no. Go for it. End it all. It's all good. <laughs> that sounded so wrong. <laughs> say, say they must subscribe, Brevin. Remember yes, that. Please, guys, yeah. Please subscribe. We really appreciate it. Subscribe to my doobness. Um, <laughs> and please uh, remember yeah. to subscribe, seeing that Brevin yeah, doesn't cool. remember. Like, just do his job for him. Yeah. Brevin, oh, you wait, wait, do wait, wait. Well? wait, 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 wait. So, like we said, um, it, it comes down to, like you said something about the knock-ons and, and, the, and the stupid mistakes. Uh, Brett will tell you. It, it, that's an attitude thing. Dropping balls. Yeah. It's an attitude thing, and like I said, that stems back to the World Cup. It's uh, uh, I'm feeling sorry for myself, and the attitude's just wrong. That's all I wanted to say. And uh, yeah, please like, subscribe, and uh, ring the bell for notifications when we do upload because that is three times a week on a Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Please check Spotify, check t- X, Twitter, whatever you still call it, uh, Instagram, and yeah, we appreciate you guys, and we are out. Cheers. That was a horrible thing to say about attitude and Brett just agreed because I saw him knock about 20 balls when oh, it wow. came to got... the Cape Town 10s. Both Both people, aren't even gonna... <laughs> people aren't going to hear this because it's right at the end. Thank you very much. See you next time. <laughs>